So the problem that we run into with every one of our node projects is that there's not a really great migration strategy. And maybe Bowen would actually be the better guy to teach this. But I ran across this question on Quora um, because somebody else was having the same problem. Because you know, they were, how do you deal with question too? Yeah, it's like how I think everybody probably runs into this question unless you're using MongoDB or you don't have a schema. But if you want to use Postgres or MySQL or any kind of SQL solution, how do you migrate your database? Um, so this guy actually posted a really good, fairly substantial uh, response. And I'll go through a, just two of them. I'm going to post this out to the chat, uh, to the learning room, just so everyone can have that. Um, so I read through this, and the one that I found, well, two that I found, were actually extracted from Rails, which is what we've kind of talked about. So the first one is this standalone migrations. Um, it's fairly well maintained. And it uses your basic configuration that we're familiar with from Rails. So you just install standalone migrations. You create a rake task, which feels a little funny maybe in your node project. But you get all of the goodness of a migration system that has years of development and testing and usage and feedback. Uh, you use the standard config YML. Um, here's how you create a new database migration. Um, we're used to this kind of code. You can execute raw SQL, um, so on and so forth. I can't remember. It seems like this one also deal has seeds. It does. So I can also um, have a seed file. So that's quite nice. So as I was looking through here, um, I found somebody else that pointed to this project. Active record migrations, which seems to be extracted from Rails 4. Uh, so this is kind of the one that the usage looks really similar to me. But I thought maybe we could play with this one for just a few minutes to see how well it works. So here we go. There was something about, when was this one last? Uh, this there, one there was, was something about, this one. maybe it was a slightly different one. Um, with like standalone migrations was the um, how do you say successor to another one of these projects. We might not have been this active record migrations. It might have been separate. Yeah, and I I don't know. Um, let's look in the gem file here to see if we can learn anything. So this uses active record three. The standalone migrations. Okay, I think that's what it was. Is this active record standalone migrations? And this one was successful. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure on this one. Like, I would have thought that. I'll have to look around some more and, and see where it was. It's still like that. Okay. Maybe they're both the active active projects, and there was like a third or longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's probably more, so we should look into those. Um, this project is a little bothersome because it doesn't seem like his gem file has, um, well, maybe his gem spec has the requirements for Active Record in it. Dependency, dependency. Oh, there we are. So he's just put his dependencies directly in the gem spec. So there we have uh, Active Record 4.2. Um, just kind of interesting how each chooses to put their project together. But this is a really thin wrapper on top of it. There's not a lot of code in here, which I actually like because I want the code from the main, from Active Record. I want the code everybody's working on. I don't want yeah. somebody else's stuff. So let's just, um, let's just try this. I'm going to create a gem file in this directory. So now we have you know, a dependency on Ruby in our JavaScript project, but that's okay. We kind of have one anyway because uh, it uses the Ruby SAS processor, I believe. 
I think so too. Oops. Actually, that was, my, that was my initial thought in terms of trying to find a node base migrator as to avoid dependency on Ruby. But the way things are going, it's like, well, you know, it's not such a bad thing. Yeah. And I can't remember. It, it, we need a gem set, is that correct? Yeah. Dot Ruby dash gem set and dot Ruby dash Never, I don't do it enough that I remember. Ruby dash gem set, and then a Ruby dash version. Um, and I don't know what the latest is. Is, is it two one zero? Something like that. And we'll just call the gem set wilt whatever. So the latest version of Ruby is two two. Oh, it's two two. Yeah. Thanks. You can tell I've been writing mostly JavaScript lately because... <laughs> okay, we're going to do 2.1 and I'm going to install 2.2 um, in the background because it takes a little while. Oops. So just for demonstration, this will be easier. It looks like you got 2.1.3 on installed, so... Okay, we'll do 213. How's that? Okay, so now we should be set up so we can run bundle install and get those gems. Oh, we need the gem source. Um, where are we at? Let's source. Actually, I don't think that's it either. Uh, where's the example? Sorry, I just don't remember the layout of the gem file well enough to again look at it often enough to remember. You can specify the Ruby version and say you can have Yeah, and I always wondered what the advantages and disadvantages to both are. I guess one lets RVM manage it and the other bundler requires it or something for you. I would set a specific check also like on servers. That's what it is. So then we can also do this Ruby. Ruby. And we want 2.3. Of course, now our Ruby version is in two places, which seems like it could be problematic. If you forget. All right. Let's install this. All right, so while that's installing, we can go back and see what else we need to do. Let's do this. Um, let's create a rake file. Load in all of the Active record migration tasks. So now we can run rake db migrate and keep us happy. Still installing. Okay, so while that's still installing, um, now we have to create a db folder here. And create a new file. Just be dangerous in the root. <laughs> why not? Okay, so as soon as this finishes installing, we should be able to create our database. 
which is also really handy. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Anybody know what the bundle bin stubs does? It's probably just. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, all right. Means. How you go for it? Uh, it just creates some wrapper strips in your directory, in the bin directory. So, like, you know, I don't, don't have to be bundle exact to that little of the body. It just be bin slash, bin slash, great. Okay. So I created these files, which maybe we don't want to deal with. I don't know. I guess if we don't do that, then we just always have to run bundle exec whatever, right? But if we're not using any of those scripts, it's not going to be well. Yeah. With, with like Rails, when you do that, it'll, with Rails 4, it'll load up the spring so your server starts up almost instantly and your uh, specs start instantly and whatnot. It's really nice. Okay. So, but for what we need, we probably just want the rake, right? But we could also get that with this bundle exec rake. It just depends on if we want yet another folder in the project, which maybe we do, maybe we don't, I don't know. Let's try um, rake db create and see if it crashes. Oh, we don't have, well, it doesn't think the username root exists. Um, try Groot instead. Try Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was actually correct. Uh, oops. That's how my SQL database is set up, or my MySQL is set up that way. I'll bet this is just my local username. Okay, so it actually ran. There's no database for it to create because there are no migrations or anything. But it did run, so... That's kind of handy. And um, it looks like if you don't want to do this with config in a DB directory, you can you can just write the code for it. Where we've always done this config YML, I'm inclined to continue to use that methodology. Um, so it looks like Here's the biggest change. Instead of using Rails generate migration, you do rake db new migration. So that's easy. Let's try it. Uh, rake. Okay, so Oops. Something like that, I think. Well, sure enough. It's kind of a weird syntax, but whatever. Now we have the nice migrations we're accustomed to from Rails, so... It seems like that was relatively painless. The only disadvantage maybe is that now wherever you want to deploy to, you have to have Ruby on the server during your database migrations. Does that become an issue at all? Bowen? No, not, not serious to me. Okay. I mean, just from a sysadmin point of view, you want to have a few more dependencies on the machine as possible. 
I think what it gets to as far as the experience with node based migrations to be a lot less hassle. So it's fun. Okay. Um, so maybe we'll, I'll, I'll play around with this a little bit more. I'd be interested to try to deploy something to Heroku using the Node.js stack, but then also require Ruby so that you can run the migration. So that might be an interesting challenge to see how difficult that is to get working. But like you say, having a good migration strategy in place seems well worth the cost of just having to add Ruby into your project. 